the way an onion grows, you want the most vegetation possible out there to make the biggest bulb. Don't go cutting your onion tops. Don't worry about them if they're breaking or getting too big or sprawling all over the ground. That's what you want. You want a lot of greenery. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? I hope everybody out there is having a wonderful day. It's a scorcher out here today. We didn't hardly get any rain yesterday. Just a little sprinkle, not enough to do anything. So we're still in bad need of some rain. We got several things we need to do in the garden today. We got these red onions behind me here. They've been in the ground forever. We need to pull those up, start letting those cure. I think we've got a few doozies in there. So it'll be interesting to see just how big of a red onion we grew. Then we're gonna go over the top 10, my best top 10 tips for growing big onions, things I've learned over the years. And then lastly, we're gonna do a little raised bed garden. And so I've got three more of those little fire ring raised bed setups. We're gonna put them underneath the pecan tree over there beside those other ones. And finally get some of these herbs in the greenhouse planted. So here's our red onions. We've got three rows, two different varieties, and then two different treatments on these first two rows here. So these first two rows are a variety called Chianti. And then this row here is a variety called Red Rock with the two Chianti rows. The first row here, we trimmed the tops at planting. This row here, we left alone. So we can compare those two scenarios and we can also just compare the Chianti to the Red Rock. Now what's unusual about these red onions this year, and this could just be a varietal thing because I've never grown either of these varieties, is that these lasted a lot longer or took a lot longer to mature than our yellow onions. Usually red onions are the first thing to harvest because they want to bolt badly on you and we usually end up getting those out of there first. But Hadn't been the case with these and haven't had a single one of these bolt, which tells me these are really two good varieties as far as being bolt resistant red onions. Now we're showing some of the signs that they're ready to harvest. Some of them have fallen over like that guy right there. And the rest of them here, the tips are starting to die back some, not completely yet, but, but it's time. We gotta get these things out of here. I need to use this plot here to plant a cover crop for the chickens. So we gotta get these guys out of here. They might hang around and be fine for another couple weeks, but it's time. So just like we did with our yellow sweet onions, we're gonna take these, we're just gonna pull them up, lay them on the soil there, let them cure in the sun here for a few days. Like I said, we don't have any rain coming, so that should be just fine. They'll cure a lot faster sitting in the sun than if we put them under the barn. So let's flip them up, lay them on the soil, and then we can kind of compare the varieties and treatments here. They say I'm acting crazy, but I just want to lie in the sun. And there we go, they're all flipped. Now, these are the biggest red onions I have ever grown. We usually do all right with red onions, but most of the time I would say they're around the size of a couple of those right there. Nothing like these monsters here. So some of these are absolutely huge. Now there's a reason why this row farthest from me has fewer onions and I'll discuss that in a minute as we're comparing these treatments here. So the one farthest from me there, that's the Chianti that we trimmed the tops right at planting. The second row is Chianti with no trim tops. And then we've got Red Rock right here in this third row. So first let's talk about this whole top trimming deal. Now we're talking about trimming the transplants before we plant them. We're not talking about trimming the tops once the onions get up and growing. So what we did is we trimmed them right out here in the field right before we put them in the ground. That was a big mistake. So trimming them like that right before you plant them just really stressed. Hey truck. Just really stressed those transplants and we lost a lot of transplants and that's why we have fewer onions in that row than in the row that we didn't trim. Now I did some experimentation with my backup transplants, some that I had left over and it does seem like trimming the tops on the transplants or the seedlings does help make them a little tougher and a little more resilient. But you wanna do it 
several weeks before you intend on planting. Don't do it right before you're putting these things in the ground, especially if it's the least bit warm outside. But as far as any size differences between the ones we trimmed and the ones we didn't, I can't tell anything. I mean, we've got big onions in that far row there. We've got big onions in this middle row here. Really no significant differences in size. So I would say, you know, trimming the transplants does make them a little tougher, a little more resilient in the ground, but it's not gonna make a bigger onion. As you can see here in this second row, we've got some really huge red onions there. And we didn't trim these at all, do anything to those. And that row, we trimmed them right before planting. Lost a bunch of them, but the ones that stuck around, the ones that made it, did make some nice onions too. Now another thing that's interesting to me about this Chianti variety is the different shapes of these onions. So usually you either got a round onion or you got a granite style or flattened onion. But these are all a little different. Some of them, like that one on the end that's really big, it's really flat and almost looks like a yellow sweet onion. And then some of these are a little more round, kind of like a red onion you might see in the grocery store. So there's a good bit of size variation, excuse me, not size, shape variation here as far as some being round, some being flattened, and some kind of being in between. All right, so we kind of broke down the results of that trimming versus not trimming experiment. Now let's compare these two varieties with both of those rows that weren't trimmed. Now if I was writing a dissertation on this, I'd weigh and measure the diameter of all these onions for both of these varieties and we'd look at all the results and have some really concrete comparisons here. But I'm not gonna do that. We're just gonna use the eyeball test. So from the eyeball test here, this red rock variety Still one of the biggest red onion varieties I've ever seen. So a really, really good variety. Really nothing wrong with it at all. There's a few small ones in there, but most of those are big, big red onions. But I think this Chianti variety here edges it out ever so slightly. We've got more big onions from that row and the biggest onions are bigger than the biggest onions for this red rock variety, but nothing wrong with this red rock variety at all. Just not quite as big as these Chianti onions here. So I grabbed the three or four biggest ones for comparison sake here. So this is the red rock variety. These are the Chianti onions. And man, these things are heavy. It's all I can do. I can't grab more than three or four of these things. They're just so big, I can't wrap my hand around them. But you can see, these are a hair bit bigger, a little bit bigger. These are still big red onions, just not quite as big as these. So these Chianti onions here, they just, I don't know. This is amazing to me. These are bigger than any of the yellow sweet onions we grew. Some of those DP sweet onions were huge, but I believe all these are bigger. Now I'm not gonna weigh these because if we weigh them, then we're kind of stuck to that weight. If we don't weigh them, then like I said with those other onions, they're a little bit bigger than a softball now. These things will be bigger than a beach ball in a few weeks. And one more thing, you might be wondering how to spell Chianti, and I may not even be pronouncing that right, but it's C-H-I-A-N-T-I. We got these from neseed.com. This is a hybrid short day variety, so not everybody all over the country can grow this onion, but if you live in a short day region, you should definitely give Chianti a try. So overall, we did real good with our onions this year, especially considering the fact that this was the first time we've grown onions organically. Also the first time we've ever grown no-till onions. And it was fun to compare all those different varieties. They didn't look that great in the beginning, but I think that was mostly weather related. Once they got up and going, we eventually got a pretty nice harvest from all the varieties. There weren't really any stinkers there. Those Texas legend onions didn't overwhelm us, but most all the varieties we tried were pretty good. Now, before we get into our top 10 list here, let me say this. I appreciate all the people out there, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all the content creators that are trying to teach people how to garden. Some of these people out there are spreading some bull jive about planting onions and growing onions. You got to be careful what you see out there on the internet. Some people will mislead you into doing things that you don't need to do when you're growing your onions. So I've got a top 10 list here of the things you need to do to grow 
nice onions you know if you don't want to grow monster onions that's fine but you'll grow some nice onions you may have a few monsters in the bunch as well so without further ado let's get into the list so we're going to jump through these pretty quick as we get closer to onion planting time later this year we'll dig into the details of these tips a little more we're just going to kind of bounce through them right now because most people are harvesting onions or have already planted their onions so tip number one got to pick the right day length variety so either short day intermediate day long day depending on where you live if you're not sure i'll put a link below if you're watching on youtube to a blog we have that has a map that tells you you should be planting short day intermediate day or long day onions got to pick the right day length variety for where you live number two hybrid onion varieties will always yes i said always and i don't like to use absolutes hybrids will always outperform open pollinated onion varieties i've tested this time and time and time again hybrid onions always make bigger onions always do better than your standard heirloom or open pollinated onion varieties for example those timon onions we grew this year the round yellow onion did way better than the texas legend another round yellow onion the dp sweet onion we grew this year the flattened or granite style yellow onion did way better than any of the 1015s I've grown in the past. This Chianti and Red Rock, these two hybrid varieties did way better, way better onions than any of the red Creoles I've grown in the past. Most people aren't saving onion seed because you don't want onions to go to seed. You want them to not bolt so they store well. So unless you're really intent on saving onion seed, grow hybrid onions. They'll do a lot better for you than some of those older OP varieties will. Number three, grow your own plants. If you don't have a seed starting set up, you don't have a grow room, that's fine, go buy plants. But growing your own plants is cheaper and you're gonna end up making bigger onions because you don't have that stress period between when those onions were pulled, when they were sitting in a store somewhere or sitting in a box being shipped to you. You don't have that kind of delay time. You're going straight from the greenhouse or your grow room right into the ground. And I promise you, if you grow your own onion plants, you will grow bigger and better onions. Number four, plan at the right time. That means not too early, not too late. Now, I'm not real good at telling people in the middle or the northern part of the country when they should plant their onions. I just kind of know my area down here, this short day region. So for us, it's pretty much any time in November. I'd say early to mid-November is ideal. I planted in late October for, I've done all right with that, but I still think mid to early or early to mid-November is perfect for us. I've planted as late as December and January before. There's a wide time frame there for when you can actually plant. If you wanna maximize your onion harvest, for us down here at least, it's early to mid-November. So you can plant too early, you can plant too late. Figure out what that ideal time frame is for your area and aim to get them in the ground then. Number five, give those onion transplants, when you put them in the ground, give them a balanced fertilizer initially. When I say balance, that means something with relatively equal proportions of N, P, and K. So those three numbers you see on the fertilizer back. We used an 855 here, so not exactly equal as far as the NPK goes, but it worked pretty well. So get something that's close to balance there, and that's what you want to give your onions early. Number six, once the onions get up and going, once they have several leaves on them, heavy on the nitrogen. I mean, use a fertilizer with just straight nitrogen. You don't need any phosphorus or potassium, just a nitrogen fertilizer. Now, if you want to be organic, you can use that nature safe 1300 like we did. It works great. If you don't care about being organic, you've got several options, you know, Chilean nitrate, ammonia sulfate, lots of different options out there, but go heavy on the nitrogen once they get up and going. Number seven, water heavily. Onions are heavy feeders, they like a lot of nitrogen. They also like a lot of water. You about can't water them too much. So we use drip irrigation because we can give them water right where they want it. If you get plenty of rain, that's good. Or if you've got a good overhead watering setup, that's fine too. Just make sure you give them plenty of water while they're growing. Number eight, stop feeding the onions or stop fertilizing the onions when they start bulbing. So when you see that ground cracking around that onion stem, you start to see that bulb enlarge, don't fertilize them anymore. Number nine, and this is the one I see people giving the most information on. 
don't mess with the tops of your onions once you put them in the ground a lot of people get worried about their onion tops getting too long and kind of bending and falling or spreading all over the ground that's perfectly fine we don't touch our onion tops we don't mess with them at all the way an onion grows you want the most vegetation possible out there to make the biggest bulb don't go cutting your onion tops don't worry about them if they're breaking or getting too big or sprawling all over the ground that's what you want you want a lot of greenery that's going to make a bigger bulb don't go cutting your onion tops leave them alone once they get going if you want onion tops to eat grow you another row of spring onions or bunching onions or something like that before your bulbing onions don't mess with the tops and then finally number 10 which is probably the hardest one you got to keep the weeds under control and this is tough especially for us down here because onions are in the ground so long we plant them in november in this case we're harvesting these in you know mid-may so they're in the ground you know what six months out of the year if not longer and that's a long time to keep the weeds managed on something now some people grow them on plastic that's a great way to manage the weeds we just kind of try to stay on top of it come in here and scratch around with a hoe and keep the weeds to a minimum if you get a lot of weeds in your onions that's going to rob a lot of the nutrients that you're trying to give to those onions and so the onions might not be fed as well as they should be you know or would be without weeds the other thing i've noticed over the years a couple of times i've let the weeds get out of control on my onions and the weeds get taller than where the onion bulbs are sitting and it creates this kind of moist damp environment around the bulb and i had a lot of rotting of the onions that year so weeds are going to rob nutrients they'll also make things too moist around that bulb when it gets close to maturity and you can have some rotting so do your best to stay on top of the weeds all right so that's my top 10 list i hope it was helpful for you if you disagree with anything on my top 10 list that's okay please do share that in the comments below i'd love to hear why you think any of my points doesn't make sense or doesn't apply to your particular growing situation and as i mentioned earlier come probably late september this year when we're starting onion seeds in the greenhouse we'll go into a lot more detail on some of these points here kind of elaborate them on a little more show you exactly how we do it i just want to give kind of a broad overview you can bookmark this save it share it whatever you want to do but i think these tips if you've struggled growing onions before i think following these 10 tips will definitely help you be successful all right now for a little raised bed fun so underneath this pecan tree here where it stays fairly shaded we've got three of these little fire rings we set up last year one of these we've got some snapdragons abram wanted us to plant some snapdragons they're hanging in there i don't water these as much as i should i kind of forget about them i need to start watering them more regularly they'd probably look a little bit better but we've harvested many bouquets of flowers off those snapdragons we've got our horseradish right here and over here we've got some thyme and some garlic chives and then today we're going to add three more kind of right in front of these right in line with those other three so why are we adding more of these little raised bed setups we got a plethora of in-ground garden where we could plant well there's some things we don't want to plant a lot of we just need a few plants of them and they don't really fit into our garden rotation especially if it's a perennial and it will be there you know year after year last year we tried growing some herbs in the garden in rows some of it worked well some of it didn't the basil which you can see I think right there worked really well and so we're continuing to grow that in rows some of the other stuff didn't work well at all the tarragon didn't do well in the garden because for some reason stella our lab loves the smell of tarragon and goes and gets in it and just wallers all in it so we need that on an elevated surface so she can't just roll all in it the sage didn't do as well in rows on drip tape in the garden so some of this stuff that we want to have access to doesn't do as well in the in-ground garden on the drip like we do all our other vegetables and that's why we're going to just plant a few plants in these raised beds got some helpers that showed up <laughs> with a snack is it popsicle time already mm -hmm. it's not even lunch yet <laughs> that's the perfect time for a popsicle what do you think ty ty you ready <laughs> with that let me that. You gotta measure some stuff. Oh, you gotta measure it out? Okay, come over here. 
Come over here, let me show you what to measure. Measure how far apart those circles are there. So we know how where to put them. What you got? 24? Yeah, 24. Okay. Check these other two right here. What you got right there? 24 again? No, one. Just oh, one? Yeah. Okay. Now you gonna measure the mater plants? Yeah. See how tall they are? Two meters tall? That's pretty tall. I don't believe it's quite that tall yet. It may get there. So we've got our three fire rings here. And then went and got some soil. Last time I used the uh, jungle grow mix, but they didn't have that. So we just went with this. This was the cheapest thing they had. Also bought some of this black cow. I thought about putting that in the top a little bit just for a little more moisture retention. Because sometimes this stuff right here drains almost too well. All right, let's roll them over here. Put them where they need to go. Okay, you measure that one? Titus, how tall is it? Look at the numbers. Three. Three? Oh, there's another number there. Three what? It's eight. An eight? Three eight? Okay, we got work on our numbers a little bit, don't we? No, it's 45. 45, okay. <laughs> so this is the county line brand, the track supply brand versus the tartar ones we got over there. But I think we got them close to equal there. We had to work around this root right here, but that would be close enough. All right, let's get some dirt and put in here. So we may have miscalculated how much soil we're going to need, but we'll see how far we can get here. We may need another bag for one of those on the end there. Y'all get it out? Tata's got a sage plant there, so we got cilantro, dill, tarragon, sage, and oregano. So probably plant a little bit of variety in each bed. Brooklyn's got her claw gloves now. She's ready. You got claws on both hands? I knew you'd want some. There you go. Okay, I'm ready. Yeah, let's do this. Let's kind of split it into thirds. Plant three different things in here. So we'll draw like a little piece side almost. Like that. Okay. So we'll put sage right there. We'll put tarragon right here. And we'll put some oregano right here. Okay, is this all the sage? No, I can get more. I got a few more plants. Mom, let me dig in the oregano. In the oregano? Hey, hey Dad, let, let me dig a little hole for these. Okay, you dig a hole with your bone, okay? All right, there we go. So that actually worked out okay, considering the amount of plants we had. We had a few sage plants left there. We got this one pretty full with dill and cilantro and that stuff will start going to seed in this heat but hopefully being in the shade here it'll get big enough to get a few decent harvest off of it and use those dill plants there to make some pickles and then over here all this stuff should do pretty well in this spot the sage the tarragon and the oregano my oregano didn't germinate that well i might have to um buy me a couple plants from the store when i go get a little bit more soil and I don't know what we'll plant in this one, but it's available, so I'll go get some soil and uh, we'll figure out what to put in here. Who knows what it could be. Probably not any more herbs, but uh, we'll find something. Dad, I've tinkered. can you help me this? Not right now, buddy, in just a second. It's the other wagon, Titus, the one at the very end. Walk around. Take 632. Yep. <clears throat> Okay, so we've got those six raised beds there underneath that shade tree, and I like having a few in that shaded spot because some things we plant in those don't like a lot of full sun. Right. I've also tinkered with the idea. I haven't really kind of solidified it completely, and you guys can let me know if you'd like to see me try this. But taking one of those whole 30 by 35 plots in the dream garden and doing this really neat raised bed setup with all different kind of shapes mm -hmm. and sizes. 
I've had several companies contacting me about a raised bed sponsorship, so I'm kind of working through that. I haven't decided if I'm going to do it yet, but you let me know if that's something you'd like to see as a part of our channel. I think it would work well for us because there's some things... Let's take, for instance, that celery we just grew. Yeah, it was cool to grow a whole 30-foot row of celery, but we don't really need that much celery. You know, probably four or five plants would have been better. So there's some things we probably need to scale back on and not plant yes. a whole row. I say this all the time. And like, Travis, how many basil plants have you planted over there? Well, I, I, I like my hedgerow basil. It serves... But let, let's just... How many basil plants? There's a lot. Like we, 30. But that, that has some... 30 basil uh, plants. That has some pest... Uh, management you say what purpose you want. as well, <laughs> and it looks pretty and smells good. Exactly. How many cucumber plants? Now, cucumbers. Plant? I can't help myself on cucumbers My and tomatoes gosh. and stuff, but yeah. uh, we got a bunch. Anyway, I'm thinking of that idea. Y'all, let me know what you think. I think it would look pretty yeah. cool, and uh, we'll see if one of these companies wants to partner with us, and we can give that a try. So I think that's a good idea. I'm glad you brought that up. I was gonna say a lot of our friends do not have gardens like we have, and I think for a beginning gardener that this is a quick setup and it's not as intimidating. Yeah, and now those things aren't cheap. They're what, 70 bucks a piece? You know, I was thinking that though, but I would like to say something cost comparison. No, that that's not cheap, but I also, just for the flowers I bought, $30 each. Right. So I think it's kind of, I mean. The cool thing like about those as opposed to something you make out of wood, if you build one out of wood, you really can't move it. Yeah. But for some reason I decide that spot's not any good or you know, I want to move these, I can basically pull that structure up and then kind of transplant the plants into mm. another spot. And pick all the dirt up. Yeah, so I like the fact that those are, mm -hmm. you can move them if you needed to. Yeah, and I've seen some different things that you can actually pad the bottom with so you're not having to use as much dirt. Yeah. I think like pine straw, maybe somebody did some rocks, yeah. things like that. But if you um, factor in your time, how much it would take, how long it would take you to actually build something, yeah, that's not a bad deal. No, it's not a bad deal. Talk about some things that you can grow in that. With the root structure not having to be so deep. Well, I mean, you could, I thought about using one for like just a, an odd, maybe there's a pepper variety where I just want one plant or something, uh. like a real hot pepper. I think it would be perfect for that. Mm -hmm. um, and we grow more tomatoes than just what would fit in there. But I think. But you, you know, could grow tomatoes in yeah, there. Yeah, you, you could grow tomatoes in there. So this pro, you could probably do one squash plant in there. I, I like having it just, it's just one, especially that one we have left over. If I find a pepper variety I haven't tried or I want to grow, mm. I can just stick it in there. Turmeric, we did turmeric in it last year. Do you think you'd grow potatoes in it? Yeah, you could certainly grow potatoes in it really well. So I think that would be a neat option. Mm -hmm. Lettuce yeah, would be perfect. Down. Lettuce in this spot, yes. being in the shade. So nice. Yeah, because our lettuce in the bolted. sun bolted very quick. So. Yeah. A lot of good options there and like i said all all the other plots i have are all in direct sun so it's nice to have a shady option mm -hmm. here if i need to extend the growing season or i got something that's not wanting to be in that extreme heat we can put it in the shade and go help titus he's having a um we got a meltdown going on over I there i mean he needs to feed the chickens a pumpkin and that takes priority yeah <laughs> that's right so I hope you all enjoyed the video today, getting those red onions harvested, letting those cure. We had some pretty nice ones there. Going through those top 10 tips of growing onions, I hope those were helpful for some of you guys out there and hopefully they will allow you or help you grow even bigger onions next year. And I'm really liking our little raised bed setup back here. Just easy to do, didn't take but 15 minutes to set up. Yeah, it's probably a little more costly than doing it with wood, but you know, time, there's some value to saving a little bit of time there. And now we've got some extra space there. We can grow some of this stuff in the shade. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to check out our affiliate links below. A lot of great companies that we use in our gardens here at Lazy Dog Farm. We've got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts. Don't forget to go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com, where you can find hats, shirts, recipes our garden blog with a lot more onion growing information all kind of good stuff over there if you did enjoy this video make sure to subscribe hit that notification button like and share and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm well mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life